Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below. And go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please leave me a comment down below as far as what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another Kurtzkazat video called Unlimited Resources from Space, Asteroid Mining. Let's check it out. Ah, casually watching a video on YouTube on a computer more powerful than anything humanity could build a few decades ago. This progress and all the wonderful machines you take for granted are built on a few rare and precious materials with names like terbium, neodymium, or tantalum. Getting these rare materials from the ground into your devices is ugly. The mining industry is responsible for air and water pollution and the destruction of entire landscapes. Dangerous chemicals like cyanide, sulfuric acid, or chlorine are used to extract the resources, harming biodiversity. This is one of the biggest cases against uh, renewable energy, particularly solar panels. They use a lot of materials like cadmium that are in rare earth mines, but 90% of the world's supply or something like that comes from this giant nasty cesspool hole in China that <laughs> isn't exactly good for the environment. So there's your trade-off. Every source of energy has their trade-off. Um, nuclear has a waste, which is a pretty overrated problem, but yeah, re renewable solar have the, the mining problem and locals and rare resources are also political tools when countries restrict access to them to get their way but what if we could replace the mining industry on earth with a clean process that can't harm anyone well we can all we need to do is look up Asteroids are millions of trillions of tons of rocks, metals, and ice, leftovers from the cloud that became the planet 4.5 billion years ago. They can be as small as a meter or protoplanets the size of entire countries. Most of them are concentrated in the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt, while hundreds of thousands more do their own thing between the planets. As space travel is becoming more feasible, scientists and economists have begun looking at the resources found in these asteroids. I didn't realize there was that much of a cost reduction per kilogram by a factor of 10. That's, that's pretty good. Even relatively small metallic asteroids may contain trillions worth of industrial and precious metals like platinum. And bigger asteroids like 16 Psyche could contain enough iron nickel to cover the world's metal needs for millions of years. At current market prices, the rare raw materials alone would be worth quadrillions of dollars. <laughs> well, not really, but technically. For example, there are more than 20 million tons of gold in the ocean's yeah. water worth roughly 750 trillion US dollars. But filtering out the gold would be so expensive that you'd lose money selling it. Right now, asteroid mining has exactly this problem. It's too expensive to replace mining on Earth. Billions of dollars worth of valuable resources in space are worthless if it costs trillions to get them. What makes it so hard? The principles behind mining an asteroid are simple. The basic idea is to choose an asteroid, move it to a place where it's easy to process, and then take it apart to turn into useful products. Unfortunately, all of this collides with fundamental problems humans have yet to solve. Going to space is expensive. It costs thousands of dollars in rocket fuel for each kilogram just to reach a low Earth orbit. Going further out into deep space costs thousands more. We need cheaper space travel to make asteroid mining profitable. One solution is to switch from classical rockets to electric spaceships. We already use electrical rocket engines for many of the space probes on science missions. In principle, we only need to build bigger ones. While electrical probe probe face <laughs> engines are not powerful enough to fly to space, they require only a tiny amount of fuel to go very far once they're in space. This means we don't need to spend a lot of money on fuel only to transport fuel into space. This doesn't solve the whole cost problem, but it makes it easier to start our first mission. Now that we have an electric asteroid mining spaceship, we need to find the right asteroid and get it there. We've already successfully visited asteroids with space probes and even collected samples. 
Still, to make it easier and cheaper, our first targets will probably be near-Earth asteroids. Asteroids that orbit, well, near Earth. After a few months of travel, our spaceship finally arrives at our asteroid. Weirdly formed, littered with small impact craters, it hasn't changed much for billions of years. The first thing that needs to be done is to secure the asteroid and stop it shake from spinning. It, it. There are multiple ways to do this, like vaporizing material with a laser or stopping the rotation with thrusters. Once we have a stable asteroid, we need to wait. Orbital mechanics are complicated, but if you push something in the right direction at exactly the right moment, you can move very big things with very little force. So, we wait for exactly... This is kind of like those plans to uh, intercept an asteroid that's on a collision course with their, the, this one where just extracting resources. A moment. Our ship fires its thrusters and nudges the asteroid into a trajectory that takes it near our moon. The moon is useful because we can borrow its gravitational pull to put the asteroid in a stable orbit around Earth. You need to be careful when you do this that you don't set it on a collision course with an Earth. That would make your mining operation quite unpopular. Taves even more fuel. Again, the trip takes months. But all the time since our ship was launched has not been wasted. The first space mining and processing equipment has been installed in orbit and is now carefully moving towards the asteroid. The processor works very differently than on Earth. Giant mirrors focus sunlight and heat up asteroid rock to boil out the gases. Grinders break up the dried rocks into gravel and dust, and centrifuges separate dense from light elements. Even if we only extract 0.01% of the asteroid's mass in precious metals, this is still several times more than you'd get from the same amount of ore on the ground. But what now? How do we get our precious metals safely back to ground? There are a few ways, like loading it into reusable rockets that return to Earth from space. Or if our processor contains 3D printers, we can print a faster and cheaper delivery system. Yeah, Heat-shielded cool. capsules filled with gas bubbles. These can just be dropped into the oceans where ships tow them away. This could be the starting point of humanity's first real steps towards colonizing the solar system. As our infrastructure and experience grows, our missions get more and more sophisticated. Parts and fuel produced on asteroids don't have to be launched from Earth at all. The first mining operation makes the second one easier, and so on. While the space industry grows and precious materials become cheaper, eventually we could stop mining on Earth. Even the idea of toxic mining down here might become something weird and anachronistic, like having an open fire in your living room. Landscapes <laughs> ravaged by pollution will heal, while the technological the wonders we're used to get cheaper and less toxic to make. None of this is science fiction. We don't need fancy materials or new physics to make asteroid mining happen. We could start building this future today. All we need is an initial push. <laughs> Maybe you could also use a little nudge, not... It's interesting that, yeah, we do have the technology to start today, but the challenge is being that first group because you're going to make it easier for your competitors because they could use the same asteroid you either brought closer to Earth or the same zone that you started mining in as a springboard to get to more asteroids. So I can understand the challenge here about wanting to be the first person who does it. But this would be awesome. You can pull something off like this, outsource mining to space, you could even use it help us colonize the solar system, as what we were talk they were talking about earlier. Yeah, that'd be a that'd be a great step for humanity. Um, and less impact on Earth. No more um, cesspool hell holes of mining sites for <laughs> to make your solar panels or your iPhones out of or anything like that. Let me know what you think of this down in the comments below. This stuff's fascinating. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.